Good morning. Mark Suddeth, HurricaneTrack.com, here with your hurricane outlook and discussion. The first of two for today, Saturday, July the 8th, 2017. Got a few things to talk about today. First, we're going to start in the eastern Pacific, where we do have Tropical Storm Eugene, well off the coast of Mexico. So this will pose no threat to the Baja or the mainland area of Mexico here. The resort areas are going to be just fine. This is a considerable distance offshore. It will be moving off to the northwest towards much colder water temperatures, probably briefly become a hurricane, but it will be short-lived, and it will enter those water temperatures that we've been looking at for the last several weeks that are below average all across this area through here. Nevertheless, it could bring some moisture, at least adding to the overall precipitable water, you know, some of this Leftover moisture could work its way into the southwest U.S. The monsoon is getting ready to set up out there. I was noticing that on some of the longer range models. And this will very vaguely, indirectly contribute to that to some extent. Uh, but other than that, really no impacts at all. Maybe just a few additional swells headed towards the Baja and mainland Mexico that surfers can take advantage of. If we look at the infrared satellite animation of Eugene, you can tell that it's trying to curl its way up and become better organized. It has very well established outflow, and you can see that in the upper levels here. Everything is whisking out in a clockwise fashion in the upper levels. You don't see any of these clouds blowing off in one particular direction. That's not happening, and so this should become a hurricane, and if it wasn't for the colder sea surface temperatures, that lie in its path, this would become a pretty strong hurricane uh, over the next couple of days, but we already know the end of this story because the water temperatures are in fact colder than they should be out there. So looking at the Atlantic Basin, we have the leftovers here of what was once Tropical Depression 4, and again I told you that this, that this would be a trackable feature for the next several days. You can also see this strong Saharan air layer kind of just gyrating into the area and there are some strong upper level winds. There's a sharp upper level low here and that is imparting some shear across the system as well. Just not a good time or place for this system to be and uh, nor time frame really because July is usually not a very busy month in the deep tropics and this became a tropical cyclone. A tropical depression is the lowest end of the tropical cyclone categories and so it did at least make that and uh, that's pretty impressive since it did so out here in the deep tropics this early in July. All of this over here in the Gulf of Mexico really nothing to worry about just an increase in convective activity overall. I don't see any indication of tropical storm formation from that in any of the global models so that's good news and the rest of the Gulf up here with Generally clear skies, just some pop-up showers and thunderstorms. This area will just continue to warm up. It'll be interesting when we look at the Monday sea surface temperature anomalies update, how much more the Gulf has filled in, especially in the wake of Cindy. All right, so yesterday there was quite a bit of buzz, not only from my website. I'm not trying to make it sound like it was... You know what I'm saying, there was a lot of talk, and I included myself in that, the different message boards, Facebook groups, Twitter, etc., uh, and really the last few days about this tropical wave that was coming off of Africa uh, a few days ago. It was over interior Africa, and now it's starting to emerge off the west coast, and there was a lot of talk about this, a lot of chatter, as it were, uh, that in the long range this could go on to do this or that, and with people having access to the various models, especially the global forecast system, through the various websites that carry it all the way out to the 384-hour time frame, which is 16 days, you saw the end result from time to time. You know, hurricane in the panhandle of Florida, hurricane you know, near Miami, hurricane in the Outer Banks, hurricane for Puerto Rico. You know, it's like Oprah Winfrey's handing out hurricanes for everybody, right? And you know, that's the trouble with those long ranges. You're going to get these wild swings. And we saw that certainly with Matthew last year when it was just 
an incipient tropical wave, some energy over Africa. The GFS picked up on it as a low latitude system. And in the longer ranges, we had, and I even put that in my documentary that I put on YouTube, uh, you know, it was from the Western Gulf to somewhere off the East Coast to out to sea, you just never knew. So really, beyond five days, it's just so hard to tell, and everything beyond that, really, especially a week out. You know, I'll, I'll spot the models, especially the GFS and the Euro, that extra two-day grace period, days six and seven, especially in the deep tropics, especially when we're talking about steering, that, you know, they're pretty reliable out to a week. But you have to have something first. And so that's what we're going to look at today. Uh, do we have something? And so... Let's begin, and this is a, you know what I do. When I look and see, do we have something to track that would ultimately end up affecting the United States, which is where I'm available the easiest to go and set up equipment when something makes landfall, this is where I start. And so we look and we see, yes, we do have a tropical wave, and so that's the first ingredient. Large area of energy coming off the African coastline, in an overall environment that's generally favorable. We already know about the water temperatures across this region that they are above normal, and in some cases considerably so. So then we go to look and see, well, are there any negative factors? And this is where it really starts to get interesting. So we see the Saharan air layer, just color it yellow, all through here that really squashed, it, it caught up with and squashed TD4. Now, here's our tropical wave coming off, and I think you can notice just as well as I can that there is this tremendous gap in the Saharan air layer. It's just literally been chewed away here, and you say, well, is, is that something wrong with the data or whatever? And no, it's not. This is all very moist through here, and here's the tropical wave, you know, the overall package of energy. Um, and in fact, it looks like it might even be tilted this way somewhat. I'd have to look at some more analyses from Western Africa and uh, really try to see what the tropical wave structure looks like. But really, if you look at this next feature, and this is amazing, this is the total precipitable water, and this shows you the amount of moisture in the atmosphere, uh, what we call the precipitable water. And again, this is a fantastic product from the Cooperative Institute for Meteorological Satellite Studies out of the University of Wisconsin, where you have great cheese, an occasional great football team, <laughs> and um, great satellite products for the tropics. I guess they got to do something in the warm months to prepare for those frigid winters up there. But honestly, this is fantastic. What does it show? Um, and, you know, first of all, you can see there's the package of energy and moisture associated with TD4, the leftovers of it. And so these reds in here, um, basically the higher up you go on the scale, I want you to pay attention right over here, the higher up on the scale you go, the more moisture is in the atmosphere, is the simple way to put it. So all of this blue through here, anywhere you see these blues, you're lacking in precipitable water in the atmosphere, very little moisture content in the atmosphere. All right, so that's pretty easy to understand. Blue is dry, red and orange, etc., is moist. And so, again, you can clearly see the envelope of energy and precipitable water, weak as it may be, associated with the remnants of TD4. And then I want to draw your attention to this. And this is what really gets my attention here. So, all of this blue through here is the Saharan air layer, and it's up here off the northwest coast of Africa, uh, but this is really coming in and putting a dent in that Saharan air layer, and you can see that it's got some broad turning associated with it. You can see moisture is being drawn up out of, out of the intertropical convergent zone. This gives you a lot of clues, and boy, some of this moisture content in here, look at that. We're talking about way up here at the top of the scale. And then right here, just off the coast of Africa itself, a lot of moisture, a lot of deep convective activity, and the next batch of Saharan air, you know, maybe way back here. So this is going to come off in a moist environment, sort of like a cocoon of protection. 
And so I look at that and I go, well, that's very interesting. All right, so, you know, there's a big clue. Uh, and you sort of have this westerly wind component down here, like this monsoon trough, just this general turning motion in the clouds and in the wind pattern down here, conducive to get something to spin up. It's there. So when we look at the models, especially the GFS, which has been very consistent in developing this run after run, you can't look at it and go, it's just full of it. It's broken. Somebody needs to fix it. You know, it doesn't mean that it's going to be right, but it's not like we look out here and there's nothing there for this to form from. For those of you that know this stuff, you know that is an enormous piece of energy coming off the coast of Africa. So then we look at the vorticity signature. There's not a lot there just yet. Some right here just off the coast of Africa, but this is what we can really start to track over the next few days. So you're going to see this graphic and then back over here to the precipitable water graphic quite a bit over the next few days as we figure out when and where this develops. And that being said, I'll give you a clue, and we're getting ready to jump into the GFS here. Uh, the global forecast system, the GFS model, has been indicating the genesis or the start of this system somewhere in this area around day five, roughly days four and five, 96 to 120 hours out. And then you have this very strong high pressure over the Atlantic, and it just keeps pushing it westward into the Eastern Caribbean. That's what we have seen time and again for the last few days on the GFS. So let's take a look here. And I'm going to show you something that's going to be kind of like, kind of trippy. All right, so let me first move my toolbar. We're going to play this really fast, and I'm going to show you why. I'm going to put it into motion, and then I'm going to scroll down, and as you adjust your eyes, you're going to see what I'm, <clears throat> what I'm looking for. All right, so let's put it into motion, and let me get my toolbar back here so you can see what's what. We're going out to five days, and here's what I want you to watch right through here. See? Look at that energy right there. It's going very fast, but just keep watching. See? It's right there. It comes along, and at day five, there it is. It starts to, to develop. So you get the beginnings here, and the, the transparency of my telestration is great because you can really see what I'm tracking there, that energy. Those little specks of green right there. You, know, you see it right there. It starts off. So it's not like this just comes out of nowhere. The beginning energy is right here, and it goes along this alleyway, and it develops. And you can clearly see in there what I'm looking for. Okay, so you got the beginnings here, and then the ending over here at day five, it starts to consolidate. And you can also see the leftovers here of TD4. Tracking right towards South Florida is just a cloud or two. <laughs> no worries out of this over here. But you see, there it is. And so we do have the energy in the atmosphere. It is a question of whether or not this actually happens. And I have no clue if it'll be exactly right or not. I just, I can't see into the future. We can say, well, we can look at the different ensembles, look at what the Euro says. And, you know, you remember night before last, the European model and the GFS both showed almost the same thing uh, in terms of something developing just before the Lesser Antilles over here. You remember that? Uh, and then the Euro yesterday dropped it. And so people say, well, then that means it's not going to happen. Well, maybe so. But I'm telling you, last year, for what it's worth, when Matthew was still just a low-pressure uh, tropical wave over interior Africa, even as far east as Nigeria, the GFS picked up on that energy, brought it off, developed it, and then you had a wide range of scenarios in the western part of the basin as to what ended up happening. Uh, the GFS also did very well picking out the eventual lifespan of what was Tropical Storm Brett, and that's just a few weeks ago. And it did a remarkable job down here in the deep tropics. The Euro was really good, too. It showed a high probability of some main development region activity in June, and so both of the models were generally sniffing it out, and then the GFS did a good job really developing Brett uh, as it approached Trinidad and Tobago in the couple of days prior. So I have a little bit of faith that the model, uh, quote-unquote, knows what it's doing. So let's just slow this down a little bit, and we'll go and look. So here we are, you know, 48 hours out, 
and you can clearly see the energy moving along through here. Very sparse, you know, it's got to gather itself. It's still just July, but then as we get to about 96 hours, by day four, it crosses 40 degrees west longitude, and finally here by day five, that more rounded appearance, and it is a fairly low latitude system. We are not seeing this come off and start to gel up here at 13, 14, 15 degrees north. Instead, it looks like it's around 10 or 11 degrees north latitude, and that's important as well. All right, so these are the clues that yours truly is looking at, and we want to see if there's consistency. Is the GFS going to just keep pushing this out to five days? You know, eventually the formation, or what we call the genesis, has to move closer and closer to time zero, right? Um, so if it keeps delaying the eventual formation, then we have to be a little bit suspect. Will the 12Z runs start to show that? Remember the, the models, at least the major synoptic runs twice a day, 0Z or 0UTC, uh, or Z for Zulu time, uh, for both the GFS and the Euro. So let's see what the 12Z models show. And that being said, we'll take a look and see what the Euro shows. So later this afternoon, I would say between 4 and 5 o'clock, Eastern Time, I'll do another update, and we'll take a look at what the 12Z package showed, and I'll pull up the European model. We'll use the graphics generated by Levi Cowan at tropicaltidbits.com. Uh, there's a rising star, isn't it? That's an amazing set of uh, tools that that young man has. Uh, he's going to be something else when he gets out into the government or private sector one day. And so we'll take a look at what the Euro shows and see, does it come on you know, back? With development, we'll see, right? So nothing to worry about yet. We're playing sort of detective here, uh, kind of like that movie Minority Report, where we're trying to uh, stop a crime before it happens, so to speak. But in this case, we're looking to see if there will be something happening in the future uh, that hasn't happened yet, all right? Kind of like that movie, uh, where they use those whatever they were, and they could see into the future. Remember, that was a weird movie. Um, and so we're trying to do something similar here. Look at the computer models, peer into the future uh, using math and physics there in those models, and then see if they're right. You want them to be right in the sense of you want them to be reliable. You don't want them to be right and that people get clobbered by hurricanes. But doggone it, if it's going to show a hurricane, don't be wishy-washy about it. I think that makes a lot of sense. Nothing we can do about that. They do the best they can. The people that program them... But these are the tools that I look at, and we'll take a look again uh, several hours down the road here. And if it totally gets dropped and whatever, um, you know, maybe in the next couple of days we'll just be back to daily updates, and all will be quiet in hurricane land. Or not. We'll see. So that's it for this morning. Again, thanks for tuning in. I know we went over a lot here, but this is what I do. All right? Have a good rest of your Saturday morning. I'm Mark Suttoth, HurricaneTrack.com. I'll have another video update for you between 4 and 5 Eastern Time this afternoon.